Welcome to Global One Media's Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Suado. I'm speaking today with Dirk Harbeck. He's the chairman and CEO of Rock Tech Lithium. They're a German clean tech company, which also has operations in North America, and they're focused on powering electric vehicles. Dirk, welcome to the show. Thanks a lot for inviting me. Thanks, Michael. So we've spoken to a number of companies in the lithium space, but I believe yours is the first which is vertically integrated. Let me quickly explain what that means. Rock Tech Lithium has a presence upstream with a mine in Ontario, Canada. It's in a place called Georgia Lake, not too far from Lake Superior. And your company is also building a presence downstream with a factory in Germany and later another one in Canada. These are gonna convert the mine lithium into a product that can be used in electric vehicle batteries. Now, I imagine it's gotta be challenging operating on both ends of the supply chain. Uh, there gotta be pretty different skill sets. So tell us, why did Rock Tech Lithium take this approach? It's actually a, um, a very interesting question. We we got started originally with a mining site uh, in Nazan, Ontario. So I, I invested personally in this business already in 2011. So at a very early stage, um, the first days when Elon Musk was saying Tesla shall sell 100,000 Model S. So it's a long time ago. Um, and since then, of course, the industry developed in a quite an interesting way. And originally, we wanted to develop the mine, but uh, it became clear um, for me more or less five years ago that the future of the lithium and the battery cell industries is eventually in a circular economy. So we need to get into recycling. We need to understand the chemistry uh, extremely, extremely well. So we are building our mine site um, essentially because you need to feed enough um, lithium feedstock into the system, first of all, before you can start the recycling. But we see the future of our company and also the future of the industry, because we have to look forward for the next 20, 30 years, and we want to create a clean tech company. Yeah? And then you will have much less mining, you will have much more recycling and uh, circular economy approaches. And this is what we are focusing on. I love how you bring in the circular economy and clean tech and even the recycling aspect of it. Uh, let's delve a bit closer now at those two sides to your business, starting with the mine in Ontario. Uh, and I got a trio of questions for you. Tell us, where are you in the process? When might mining begin? And could you quantify the potential? I'm very happy to do so. So we, um, we have finalized our um, pre-feasibility study uh, in the uh, end of last year. We are now in the definitive feasibility study stage. Um, we are aiming to get into production in 2026. And um, we are working very closely, which is a great thing here in Canada, uh, together with the First Nations uh, that are um, close to our property. And this is very important for us because we are creating uh, jobs here. Uh, the First Nations are also um, great business partners, um, possible investors uh, of, of us, so that we, um, we always have a strong focus on the social impact of everything that we are doing. And uh, so far, we have only uh, developed a small part of our property. So um, what, what we have done now is, is eventually equaling an output uh, of around 100,000 tons of a so-called lithium uh, concentrate here, yeah, which contains a 6% lithium in this. Um, for each larger converter, you need around 150 to 180,000 tons. So we are very confident that we are increasing um, the production uh, size and production targets uh, for our future mine um, to around 200,000 tons per year. Um, which is an amount uh, you can use to produce the batteries for around 500 to 600,000 electric cars. Wow, batteries for 500, excuse me, 500 to 600,000 electric cars. That's definitely, uh, definitely not small potatoes. Um, let's move downstream now and help us understand, for those not familiar with the process, in layman terms, what needs to happen to the lithium that you mine before it can be used in a battery? Or, or more specifically, the converters that you're building, uh, what do they do? Each of these converters uh, consists, uh, prince, uh, simply speaking, of two elements. Yeah, 
there's one element of a so-called kiln where you use um, silicium concentrate, which is usually in a, in a kind of gravel form, yeah? You burn this. This is why this first part is very energy intense, yeah? And you create an intermediate product, which is called lithium sulfate. And in the second step of this, of such a conversion plant, you have the so-called crystalliz crystallization, which is a hydrometallurgical uh, part, which is a very complicated part in, uh, in chemistry. And there, uh, the lithium sulfate will be converted eventually into a sort of white powder. It looks a bit like salt, which is lithium hydroxide. And lithium hydroxide is a key uh, product that is needed to produce the high-performance batteries. And when I'm coming back to what I mentioned before, for the future recycling business, you don't need this first part in the plant anymore, these kilns, because when you recycle batteries, you recycle usually a lithium phosphate, a lithium sulfate product, uh, which is then unclean. Um, and we have to take this then into our conversion plant. And we clean this again to battery grade materials that can again be used into the battery cells. So you mentioned recycling a couple of times now, and just recently you signed an agreement with Canada's electric battery materials. They're listed on the NASDAQ. Um, tell us what exactly does that partnership with them do? Because I believe it also focuses around recycling. Yes, it is. Um, look, first of all, I, I have to say we are building a completely new industry. Yeah, because um, the recycling in this uh, electric vehicles industry is not really existing on a significant scale. At the moment, uh, the companies are trying to extract cobalt and nickel out of the battery cells, but uh, lithium is not being e extracted. And at the same mm -hmm. time, we also do not have enough cells that are coming back um, because the electric cars are just now being sold. So we need like eight to 10 years until this uh, business can really grow up. And then in such a business, you have different elements. First of all, the used battery cells need to come back to a place where they are collected. Yeah, And this is something where uh, regulation still has to jump in. Will this be the car dealers who are collecting this? Will this be recycling companies? It's not yet so clear. But this is the first step of our supply chain. And then you have to uh, um, uh, scrap these, these batteries and you create a sort of gray powder, um, which is called black mass. And um, out of the black mass, you're then extracting the different metals that are mixed in that black mass. And we cannot do everything ourselves. Yeah, You need to be a huge company and it also doesn't make sense because what I said now is a combination on the one hand of logistics business, collecting these battery cells, then it's a, it's a me mechanical business by scrapping them. And then you need the technologies, how you do the extraction the best way. And our partnership with Electra here really has the aim. Electra has these technologies of silicium extraction, and we believe in this. And we have set up this partnership so that we do not need to develop these technologies ourselves, but that we can work on this and do this together with Electra, building a regional supply chain here for um, uh, Northern Ontario, for Canada. And um, use and these technologies to create a lithium pre-product that can then again go into the converters, which is our core business, uh, to produce again the battery-grade lithium hydroxide. Really interesting. So Electra is not your only partner. You have several high-profile ones, and you talked about something being very big a moment ago. One of your partners is one of the biggest car companies in the world, Mercedes-Benz. What exactly is Rocktech Lithium doing with them? Well, what we are seeing at the moment is a big, big shift in the car industry, a shift that has not been there for more than 100 years, I have to say. Um, the car industry goes fully electric. And when you are honest, most, most of the people do not understand yet what it means. Uh, it's, it is creating new jobs but it is also bad for some existing jobs. It is creating new opportunities, but existing companies need to find new business models. Yeah, So it's really a significant change. The OEMs in uh, Europe and in North America took a bit long to eventually make their decision to fully produce electric vehicles only in the future. The Chinese competitors were much more advanced. So I remember I was in... Um, the first quarter of 2016, so now seven years ago, um, I, I was um, I was in, in in China, and we already had 
around 8,000 fully electric buses in Shenzhen. Yeah. Mm. During that time, I lived in Berlin, and in Berlin, the German capital, up to today, I think it's only 102 electric buses. Yeah. China is fully electrified. Yeah. When you're going to, to Beijing, 50% of the cars on the, on the roads there are fully electric. North America and Europe are lagging behind. Now, we have strong OEMs, and these OEMs want to build regional supply chains, and they want to know where the material is coming from, because especially the younger buyers of cars, uh, or however our future mobility is looking like, we will have also a lot of, of, of shared mobility services. But the future buyers want to know where the material is coming from. And each element of this, uh, where is the mined material coming from? Where is it being processed? Under what conditions is it being processed? Yeah, so one of our philosophies is a zero waste approach. So we are building um, a plant uh, where we are creating lithium hydroxide, but we also have byproducts. And these byproducts are fully going into the cement and gypsum industry as pre-products uh, eventually for construction material. This is very important. And we are, I think, one of the first companies in this industry that is able to get something like this done. Although we have uh, still a relatively small market cap, um, we are much more advanced than all of our competitors here. This is including the large producers out of uh, America or Australia, because we focused from the first day on the recycling and on the full use of our materials. And Mercedes felt very much attracted by this, yeah, which is eventually obvious when, when you listen to me, um, because you want a, a clean future, and especially Mercedes with this big global brand name, they are looking for clean solutions, they want to understand who is delivering material to them, and they want to have regional supply chains. And we will be the first party in Europe to build such a fully fledged lithium converter. And this is why we, were, why we are very happy that we are uh, dealing here with the number one uh, brand name on the European continent. And this is why I think it's a, it's a very good fit. And Mercedes is our key customer. So we have mm -hmm. a contract with them of a, of a vol, uh, value of 1.5 billion euros, 1.5 billion euros over five years. It's a binding contract. And Mercedes is also one of our closest partners in building our uh, converters and uh, supporting our story globally. Wow, okay, so you're working with a recycling a company that's recycling batteries in Canada. You're working with one of the biggest car brands in Europe. Uh, you have another uh, partnership announced just maybe a fortnight ago with a Swiss mining company, Arcor. Tell us about that one. Yes, the idea behind this is again, to build regional supply chains. Because um, we have uh, also made uh, recently now an, an announcement uh, that we are receiving additional feedstock out of Argentina. Um, you know, the issues uh, at the moment is when you're building a new industry, at the beginning, you need to transport the feedstock to the places where it will be processed. So in this case, Europe does not have its own lithium mines yet. There's not so much lithium available. So we have to we have to import for a few years material out of Australia, Africa, or Argentina or North America um, to produce the clean lithium in uh, Germany. But this is of course not the permanent solution we are striving for. We are trying to get um, feedstock, this lithium raw materials, out of Europe as soon as possible. And Arcor is a very big and extremely promising project in uh, in Bosnia Herzegovina, which is a future European Union member. It's relatively close by railway to our um, German uh, lithium converter, and we have built a joint venture here to help them develop the the property, extract the lithium there out of the ground, so that we have regional uh, supply chains that can feed the European market with the lithium for the batteries. So I was reading our course says that, that uh, discovery of that uh, lithium deposit in Bosnia could be one of the largest such mines in Europe. So can definitely see the, the synergy there with you all working together. Okay. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, but you just announced one more partnership with a company called Castleberg. Quickly tell us about that. Um, this is a partnership that I uh, referenced uh, to in um, just, just before. Castleberg is a strong European uh, car supplier. Yeah, they are working with Stellantis and some other of the large um, uh, OEMs. 
and they have very strong ties into Latin America, which is important because Latin America is one of the most uh, important producers of lithium raw materials. So we got into, into a contract, um, uh, we got a contract uh, proposal from, from their side to deliver feedstock to us, to our German plant until we can receive the feedstock uh, from inside Europe. And this is a very important uh, uh, step for us. And we are very happy also about this cooperation because we strongly believe in the power of uh, what we call the Mittelstand companies uh, in this car industry and also in the uh, construction materials industry. Um, these are very experienced partners with strong management teams, strong technical experience, and uh, we are happy to partner with them, uh, to co-invest with them and to benefit uh, of their experience and these partners uh, want to work with us to get into this electric vehicles field uh, with future technologies. So you have a very interesting business model, upstream, downstream for lithium. You have great partnerships, multi-billion dollar contracts. But if we look at RockTech Lithium share price, it's down more than 50% over the past year. So two questions for you. First, why do you think investors haven't shown your company a bit more love? Well, I think in the past 12 months, as a whole lithium industry um, was suffering as a whole. So all of the share prices came down um, like uh, 60 to 70 percent, even of the large global producers, which is quite surprising. Um, the effect that we have seen um, is that there's a public view where people are still uncertain if e-mobility will be successful. For me, there's no doubt about this. This is the future, mm. uh, and this is the only way to get into the circular economy. And also, last year, we had extremely high lithium prices. They were exaggerated, and the whole industry were always saying this: these are exaggerated prices. So in the top, the price of um, the lithium chemicals that we are going to produce was around 80,000 US dollars. This is now at around 20,000 US dollars. So of course, and the media is, is, is saying what is happening there, uh, does lithium has a future? Of course, the prices we are, um, we are having today are the prices that we are using in our assumptions for our future business models. So for us, this is a very normal market. And um, it is complicated when new industries are being built Yeah, for investors to understand this. You see, I needed also some, some minutes in this interview, and uh, thanks for giving me the, the time here to explain where we are heading to and, uh, and, and what we are doing. And we are trying our best to have investors really understand this because our share price is currently significantly undervalued. Okay, so now it's elevator pitch time. Tell us, why do you think RockTech Lithium is a stock to watch? The lithium industry is a key for the e-mobility. E-mobility is the future. And we are a key element of the lithium industry and the most advanced in recycling technologies and zero waste technologies. At the same time, we are valued at a very low valuation at the moment. So we are building the Western supply chain in Europe, in North America, to build resilient regional supply chains. Yeah? And we are creating, in my point of view, a multi-billion dollar company with this. We are at the beginning, but we are growing really, really fast. And when I say at the beginning, we are much further than most other companies on, on, on this world. We, we are just not yet done with the construction. We are not generating cash flow. And until that point, uh, um, when we have the significant cash flow and we are a multi-billion dollar company, uh, then I would call us advanced. We'll definitely have you back when you are a multi-billion dollar company and hopefully uh, quite a, a few times before then as well. Uh, I mean, it's really interesting to know the demand for lithium is expected to outpace supply for at least the next, next decade uh, as more and more consumers purchase electric vehicles. Uh, so it's great to hear how RockTech Lithium is positioning itself in the different parts of the supply chain. Thank you so much for taking time to speak with us today. Thanks a lot, Michael. It was a pleasure being with you. We've been speaking with RockTech Lithium Chairman and CEO Dirk Harbeck, and you've been watching Global One Media's Stocks to Watch. I'm Michael Suardo.